Welcome to our webinar. Thank you for taking the time to view the presentation today. My name is Garnett Weber and I will be hosting today's webinar. I am one of the founders of iTracks. I am excited to host a presentation by Bert McClosey, a longtime client of iTracks, currently with Bert McClosey Consulting. Bert's presentation is entitled, Where Quant and Qual Collide, New Tools and Methods Combining Quant and Qual Research, and a Case Study on Copy Testing. This webinar includes a case study as well as a primer on advertisement testing methods and techniques. As questions come up, please enter them in the chat area at the bottom of the GoToWebinar platform. You'll see a small chat area and that you can type in questions. We have too many participants in the webinar today to open the audio lines as there would be a, a lot of um, feedback. If possible, we will incorporate the questions into the presentation as they come up. We will also have a question and answer session at the end of the webinar. Now I'd like to introduce Bert. Bert Nicosi, the presenter today, is a highly regarded marketing communications expert and brand strategist. With over 20 years of brand leadership, he has gained a holistic perspective from working on research as well as the client and creative agency sides of the business to ensure objectives are achieved and compelling insights are delivered. His work includes brand strategy, architecture, communications and marketing for blue chip companies in a range of industries, including telecommunications, consumer packaged goods, automotive, broadcast media, and healthcare systems. Thank you so much for sharing your presentation with us, Bert. Please go ahead. Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. And uh, yes, as Garnett mentioned, uh, I've been working with iTrax uh, directly and indirectly for, for a number of years. And uh, what I'd like to do today is really provide in, in the common theme of shared learning and experience within marketing communications, be it on the agency side, the marketer side, or the research side. Uh, learning is always a great thing, and uh, we are very excited uh, to be, I'm very excited to be uh, partnered with iTrax present this to you and hopefully you'll find it beneficial and you can get a, a nugget or two out of learning out of this. So basically what I would like to uh, start with is this, a case study with National Research Corporation and John Your Health. So it's it's a case study within a case study because um, as an independent consultant I have a variety of clients that, and that includes National Research Corporation as well as John Your Health. And John Muir Health is a client of National Research Corporation. So it's a lovely matrix world. And uh, this, again, this case study uh, exemplifies both my work I do with National Research Corporation as well as John Muir Health. And again, the, uh, the objective here is to uh, pass along learning to the larger community. So the discussion today is uh, really some uh, background first uh, about John Muir Health and National Resource Corporation on, on how this whole component came about. And then just take you through some first principles. It's always a great refresher, refresher in terms of uh, advertising and copy testing in terms of what makes an effective ad, why we, uh, how do we do it, uh, why measure it, and at the end of the day, what's in it for you. And that audience is really threefold. What's in it from a researcher point of view, what's in it from an agency point of view, and what's in it from uh, the end user being the marketer point of view. And of course, uh, at the end of the day, it's important to understand uh, consumers' points of view. Taking you through the measure, both quant and qualitative. Uh, this is a quant qual study, as mentioned, but we're going to focus more, most of our time on the qual side, and then get into a few slides of the ad testing case study and how I worked with iTrax uh, on the qual side, and then just wrapping it up. And as Garnett mentioned, we'd like to have this as a free form, so any questions that come up during the presentation, by all means, please let us know, and I'll try to address them immediately. There is also time at the end of the presentation for a Q&A. Off we go. So a bit of background in terms of a National Research Corporation. For people who may not be aware of them, uh, they are a market research firm, uh, and they specialize specifically in healthcare sector, so healthcare hospitals. We've been doing this for a while. Uh, they have uh, over 300,000 households nationwide on their panel. They do syndicated research. In addition to this, they have 1,500 hospital healthcare systems across the country as clients. Jamir Health who is in a suburban San Francisco uh, area is one of their clients. 
So the way this whole thing started is that National Resource Corporation, uh, again, having uh, discussions with their clients, uh, received some feedback that the clients are saying, we'd love to do advertising copy testing, um, but budgeting is an issue and timing is an issue. So if we go with the majors, and everyone knows who the major copy tester players are out there, most of them are multinationals, uh, are probably too big for the needs of uh, National Resource Corporation. Clients. So I needed something that's faster uh, and more economical and not get buried because uh, they're not working with multinational clients. So they basically enlisted me uh, as an independent consultant to help them understand the advertising testing copy world, what's working, what's not working, and actually come up with a product that's specific to the healthcare sector category within advertising copy testing. So that's basically what we did. We worked together and iTrack was a partner in, in developing this as well. Um, so the first thing we did is went through first principles of what makes an effective ad. And we reasoned, re I'm showing you this slide, is again, it's a great refresher and also it really had an impact in terms of how uh, the product was developed in National Research Corporation. And then from that, how John Muir Health used this in terms of uh, coming up with the right ad for their market at the right time. So a few things here, obviously an ad needs to break through because if an ad doesn't break through, uh, then nothing else matters because people aren't aware of it. Once it breaks through and there's awareness, uh, we want to make sure that's brand correctly so the advertiser gets credit for this brand and for the uh, ad. And then once it breaks through and is brand properly, we want to make sure it's relevant. And, you know, it sounds like pretty simple principles, but it, it's really critical for success. In addition to that, we want to make sure the consumers are engaged, our customers are engaged, both from a rational and emotional point of view. And from a quant fall study, we've tried to hit both of those areas. And at the end of the day, it doesn't sell. And so what selling could be, mean anything. It could, it could be increased traffic, it could be increased awareness, it can be persuaded, it could be persuasive. It basically needs to deliver on your overall creative strategy and your overall business objective. And that's basically what we're trying to do. So a question uh, for John Muir Health as well as some of uh, other NRC's clients were, well, what's in it for them? Because uh, the type of advertising testing they've been doing uh, were traditional focus groups uh, and, and that's basically it. Uh, and then sometimes they weren't even doing that. They were just internally looking at it, speaking to their internal clients, being physicians and surgeons and, and healthcare uh, administrators basically I just trying to understand if this ad is going to be working in the marketplace or not. So I needed to take it to the next level. So really you need to have a better understanding of the advertising potential before it launches because once it launches uh, you can track it but then the, you know, the uh, horse is out of the barn at that point and if things aren't going well you're already spending a lot of money and you'd like to find out what's going on in advance. So it's really protecting your investment. Additionally, we want to be able to manage expectations internally and externally. Uh, from an agency perspective, uh, of course, you want uh, agencies are on, on the hot seat of making this ad work and making sure that the ad solves all the world's problems. Well, advertising really doesn't do that. Hopefully, it will help influence one issue, and that's a communication issue, but I won't be able to do everything. So we want to be able to manage that, as well as from a marketer's point of view, uh, to the C-suite to understand the potential of this ad and the return on your investment, what's going to work and hopefully work well, but you need to have that understanding going in. And of course, once you do all this, you want to have best practices and really start building a database of learning. So that was from the background for National Research Corporation. And again, John Muir Health is one of many other clients. Again, how are we measuring this? Overall, it's a quant fall study, as mentioned. So the key areas on the quant side, the key measures, breakthrough, brand identity, persuasion are the three uh, main ones. Then of course, you have to have main idea, believability, likability, relevance, and brand ratings. So once you have that, you want to understand from a qualitative point of view uh, to understand, well, we know what worked, but we're not sure what worked why and why it didn't work. So through an online focus group using a, a moderator to probe and having various engagement tools such as heat map and modicon, which I'll get to through the presentation, we have a better understanding of why behind the what. So it's in this case study, we tried to do both quant, we did do both quant and qual. I understand there are certain times when you could only do quant, there are certain times where you could only do qual, and those are both valid reasons. How to measure it on the quant side, it was pretty simple. A 20 minute survey, a sample of 150 people, market specific, uh, two ad concepts for a maximum. 
Then a qualitative slide, this is where it becomes really interesting, is that we had a 60 to 90 minute online focus group, and we'll take you through some of those uh, uh, elements. And we had six to eight people within the focus group, similar to a traditional focus group. But the uh, a differentiator here is the people we selected were actually from the quant people, uh, from the 150 we selected the quant, we did a quant survey. And we wanted to be able to get a range of opinions. So what we've done, we were already able to get a top line of the quant before they started the qual. So had an idea of what was working and what areas need to be improved. We wanted to get people that had a range of opinion of the ad. Some people who loved the ad, some people who were neutral. People, some people who didn't necessarily like the ad uh, but weren't dismissive of it because we want to be able to understand what they didn't like and how we can improve it. In terms of reporting, uh, you're seeing it right now in terms of how it's reported. It was a PowerPoint presentation, uh, executive summary, of, uh, the quant as well as a call shown in a graphic response, uh, action steps. And uh, it's very quick turnaround. From the time we received trade of National Research Corporation received trade of from John Muir Health, the full report uh, was back to John Muir within two weeks, which is, uh, I think, pretty fast and in time. Okay, so for John, so this is the case study with John Muir Health, again, uh, being the client of National Research Corporation. They had two ad concepts. Uh, one is called Experience in Economics, and it was in the field for five days. Methodology again was quant and qual. It had 100 people on the quant side, 6 to 8 people on the qualitative side. And we hit the right 95% uh, confidence level as we need to do on quant. And then we went through the whole research objective of basically understanding between these two ad concepts which is the most persuasive. We also work with the advertising agency directly uh, to understand the communication objective and communication strategy. Because from a research point of view, uh, we have a better idea of how to probe and what to probe if we understand the objective uh, and the strategy. And at this point, the objective was really to uh, create a preference amongst physicians and consumers for robotic surgery at John Muir Health in, in order to increase surgical volume from a business point of view. From a strategic point of view, is really differentiating John Muir Health from other hospitals in advanced robotic surgical capability. So that's the technical side, but also doing it with an experienced caring team. So that was really the strategy. So everything we probed on quant as well as qual had to be able to deliver on these communication objectives and communication strategies. Here is the first ad in concept, and this is the one that was called experience. And the way it was uh, perceived is that it could run as a double page spread in, in print or as a single ad, uh, either the one on the left or the one on the right. So just let me read you to, uh, that to you. The one on the left says, uh, John Muir Health, the logo at the top left, as you see. Experience John Muir. Minimally invasive expertise with a caring touch. And the second part of this ad, a wholehearted commitment to care. From highly trained surgeons and caring staff, right down to the most advanced robotic technology, we're dedicated to delivering the best minimally invasive experience. So that's ad concept number one. Here is the second ad concept. It's called Humanotics. So a slightly different format. We have this uh, surgeon and the robotic on the right-hand side kind of molded together, saying cutting-edge care with a human touch. And the left-hand side is explaining this new word, meaning human and robotic together, called Humanotics. And just let me read this to you. Humanotics now. Practice unique to all surgeons, nurses, and staff at John Muir Health. Humanotics, adjective. All care at John Muir Health is humanotic, combining a human caring touch with the most advanced robotic technology for successful outcomes in minimally invasive surgery. Antonym, robotics. So this is what we tested from a quant and qual point of view. Bert. So, oh, yeah. Bert. Oh, uh, Garnett here. We, uh, we do have a question. Uh, the question is, did you mix the range, did you mix range of attitudes to add in each session? Um, so I believe the question is relating to, um, you mentioned that you had different attitudes that were um, discovered during the quantitative phase of your research. And so in each focus group session, did you mix the attitudes or uh, did you segment? Uh, we, we mixed. So uh, we basically wanted to keep the, uh, the focus group a combination of people who liked the ad, people who were neutral to the ad, and people who were somewhat negative but not necessarily dismissive, so we wanted to have that full range. So if we get a, 
a group, that's a great question. So if we could get a group of uh, focus groups that everyone loves the ad, well, I'm not going to get a lot of learning other than having maybe a, you know, a, a loving session. Uh, and people, everyone who hates the ad, that's not going to be great either because it could be dismissive and we're not going to get any learning. So if we get a, a cross section of people liking it, people neutral, people perhaps not adoring it, but not necessarily dismissing it, we thought uh, we would get better learning out of that. That's the way we did it. Thank you. There's another question. Did you interview both physicians and consumers? Uh, for this ad, it, it was consumer only. Uh, but uh, at the end of the day, the results presentations at, uh, were within the C-suite as well as, uh, and within that, there were uh, physicians on the board for Child Care Health. So we, the internal clients were uh, not just the marketers at John Muir Health, but their clients, which are physicians and, and board members. Great, thank you. Welcome. Go so ahead. here's an example of, uh, and this isn't the whole uh, case study, but just to give you a flavor of how these were delivered, results and conclusion component. Based upon the quant and qual, uh, humanotics really had the better potential uh, to do well in the market because it outperformed experience on most of the key measures that you see here, likability, information, believability, breakthrough, persuasion, which are critical. So uh, that was the recommendation moving forward based upon this conclusion. I also looked at it from a perception point of view, humanotics increased perception on key measures. Experience, not so much. Experience did well on technology, but that was only one part of the equation from the overall communication objective and strategy from the advertising agency. That has to be technology as well as human care. The human care element was missing. Brand identification on both were a bit soft from a quantitative point of view. So we, what we found out in terms of key insight, this whole idea of coming up with this new word called humanotics, so representing human and robotics working together was acceptable, easy to understand, incredible. Uh, so that was the key insight. And here's an example of the indicated action. What uh, myself, I, I recommended to National Research Corporation, John Muir Health, based upon this information, is to move forward with and go ahead and produce humanotics, uh, but with some changes. And both from the information we received from the quant side and the qual side is that uh, some of these changes need to be made, including perhaps looking at the doctor getting came up a bit grumpy and some of the tone and compassionate elements weren't really there. Cutting edge wasn't there. Uh, from a statistical point of view, as mentioned, compassionate, compare, compassionate care wasn't there. And that's something what we want to be able to probe on the call side. Now, uh, the next couple of slides, I'll just give you an example of, of the, the way the client is presented. So you have, I just took you through the uh, quick executive summary, and there's more detail uh, that we actually did during the presentation. But you look at breakthrough, and you have the quant to back it up in terms of what adds a breaking through here. Uh, human analytics is doing directionally better uh, than experience. Brand identification, as mentioned, that they're both somewhat soft. Persuasion, human analytics has a better likelihood to uh, be utilized, so it's more persuasive, and the numbers back it up. Main idea uh, actually are strong on both, but a little stronger on humanotics. Likeability, humanotics is uh, significantly uh, like better than experience, and that's a key component in terms of persuasiveness that people like the ad. We have quantifiable numbers to back it up. Uh, believability, humanotics is strongly believable uh, and significantly more than experience. And then we look at the perceptions for John Muir Health. Uh, for the experience component, uh, again, technology moved, but the other things really didn't move. On a humanotics, technology moved, innovation moved, compassionate care moved, and those are all part of the overall objective to create a strategy. Uh, so that was critically important to learn. And then in terms of preference, humanotics was preferred uh, a lot more than experience. In addition, to the, on the quant side, there were also open-ended questions we asked from a main idea point of view. Uh, and so uh, respondents in their own words uh, understand what the main idea was and it really helped the agency to understand if people are, and the market to understand if people are really getting it or not and through the open ends that really, that's really helpful in terms of having them describe the main idea. And uh, we also asked them uh, suggestions to improve the ads and this is great insight for the advertising agencies, not that we're going to have someone to be a copywriter or art director, but what they say kind of helps in terms of what areas we uh, to improve, like make the facility need bigger, as an example, and that came up of the quant and 
it came out on a call as well from COVID hits. So that's kind of a, a quick way to go through the qual uh, quantitative and then what I'd like to do for the remainder of the time is really go through uh, the quant qualitative components in, in detail. So we understand what uh, the results were from a quant and now we want to understand why. So in terms of putting together a moderator guide, it's exactly how you one would put together a moderator guide for a traditional focus group. We, uh, you know, I worked with uh, John Muir Health, I worked with their agency coming up with the moderator guide, making sure we hit all the key components that we would like to discuss. Things like uh, what's your reaction to the ad, is it positive and negative, why, personally what does it mean to you, really probing the things from a, a robotic surgical point of view, the coldness, the warmness, the full gamut. So that's the moderator guide and now you, uh, this screenshot really shows you uh, in practice how this works and this is from a participant point of view on the online focus group. So they see this on their computer screen again they could be at home uh, in their, on a kitchen table, they could be in their uh, living room uh, lying on a couch, they could be anywhere. The cool thing is that they don't have to be at a central location, there aren't uh, scheduling issues, cost, travel cost, getting everyone together from a, a logistical point of view, it, it's really simple to be able to do it online. On the left hand side, basically it has the overall commentary uh, based upon the discussion guide. Here I am being the moderator and asking the question, for example, Alice, why is that why is it that you commented that you feel as though the staff may not be friendly and she gives a response and then everyone else the responded to see uh, Alice's response. On the right hand side uh, in the open window is the actual ad uh, as you've seen so the consumers see it again, the respondents see it again and they comment based upon the moderator guide. Now from an observer point of view, this is what one sees. So in a traditional focus group, you're in a one-way mirror in a back room, like yeah, yeah, eating as much candy, drinking as much coffee as possible, but now you can do it at home or, or, or in the office or wherever that may be. So what you see uh, is in the main room, is on, on the left-hand side, you uh, see all the comments going on from the respondents. On the right hand side you see the, uh, the back room and this is where the people in the back room chat but the respondents don't see this. I as a moderator see it and everyone else in the observing room sees it and they follow along in terms of how the chat is proceeding based upon the moderator guide. And one of the questions we have here highlighted on the right hand side is Chad, one of the observers, uh, asked, uh, can I ask, uh, inquire Alice, can you inquire why Alice thinks this staff may not be super friendly and I respond yes of course I can do that and then the left hand side I go ahead and I ask Alice under the green uh, we see Chad and Bert only we see that but I ask a question to Alice about a commenting about staff being friendly so Alice sees that in her room but she does not see this and it's it's highly efficient and it's the equivalent of writing something down on a piece of paper and having someone have to bring it into the moderator in a, in a traditional focus group you don't need to do it and for people who aren't tech savvy from a researcher point of view or a respondent point of view, this is really simple to use. It's so simple, even I can use it. Uh, so uh, there aren't any technical issues and it's, it's a very easy learning. Now from a moderator view is this next screenshot on the online focus group. Uh, again, what you see on the right hand side is the moderator guide uh, as I showed you a few slides ago. So all of this is preloaded. And then when you're ready to post, you just hit post and it slides over and then the question is asked to the group. And then uh, again, everything could be, uh, is flexible, any questions come up, as an example that we sh uh, showed momentarily about Chad, uh, he can type in the question to me and I can send it into uh, the room uh, so only the, the respondents see it, no one else sees it and it's a very fluid and very easy So uh, from there, I'd really kind of like to take you, th and that kind of gives you a background, hopefully, in terms of how the actual uh, process works. And then from there, what happens is you get an online focus group summary. And it's the same type of idea you would get in a traditional focus group summary, except a few things uh, are different. One is the focus group transcripts are immediately available right after the group. So if I'm a strategist at the agency, I can download this and review all the 
all the comments uh, that I just observed and start making my own notes in addition to waiting for the moderator, me sending something over 24 hours later, which is pretty fast as well because all the information is already documented and, on, and basically available online. Uh, so you don't have to go back and listen to a recording. You can if you'd like, but all the information is already there because it's, it's a chapter. So an example here in terms of uh, the information coming out of this specific case study for humanotics, uh, it was overwhelmingly positive. Uh, we probed the different areas about the robot and the doctor working together. And the whole idea of the doctor being caring uh, was evident here, and that was critically important. We also probe the positives and negatives, and a lot of the positives and negatives, again, were uh, probing areas that we found in the quant, and we really wanted to try to pull it more uh, out into the open on the qualitative side. Uh, some of this thing uh, about the positives, as I already mentioned, about the melding of uh, surgeon and robotic surgery worked well, but also some of the negatives about uh, the doctor not looking happy and cutting the word cutting may not be appropriate in the surgical environment. Another adjective might be better. Uh, again, uh, we are, were able to find this out on the call side a lot more than the quant side of them saying, yeah, I don't really like it, but I'm not sure why I like it. Here we can really probe on that. And that's, that's the critical thing in terms of obviously doing the qualitative with addition to the quant, doing it online, the, the information is available almost instantly. So uh, here's an example of the actual screenshot of uh, the emotional component. So you know we go through the moderator guide and ask various questions. At the same time, we also want them to mark up the actual ad because people respond. There's different ways of communicating. So people can respond to a question I have from the moderator guide and they type in the keyboard in their response. But we also want to try to get to the emotional element and what are elements that they like and don't like within the ad. So on the left hand side, uh, under the main room, here I am being the moderator and then just describing to them the instructions in terms of this whole sequence working. But a new browser is going to show up and go ahead and mark it up and, it's, and I'll give you a demonstration in terms of how it works. It's really simple to use. And then the comments start popping up and a comment here, uh, I like the robot's hand uh, on, the, on the top. And, and then I can ask Tara here, Tara, what is it that you like about the robot's hand? And Tara can respond, I like the precision that it demonstrates. It gives me confidence that the surgery will be done exactly right. An example of being able to probe, just like you do in the uh, traditional focus group, but everything is documented and it's here. And I'm probing for an emotional component because they put a check mark there and you want to understand why they put a check mark there. Or conversely, areas of a white background seems a bit cool not the type of information you would be able to probe on a quant side or pull out on the quant side. And the other thing I found, or we found National Research Corporation, John Muir Health, and myself found out on this, is that the dominant person in a focus group, which you've all experienced in focus group, doesn't it, uh, happen as much on online because uh, there isn't that loud personality uh, because you're keyboarding versus speaking, uh, and that, that's a beneficial uh, component, is that everyone is a bit more equal. And if people aren't keyboarding, then I would just probe them gently and ask for their opinion. And again, uh, some more examples of, of uh, this case study. And there were a couple things I, I would like to show you. In the top right hand corner, again, this is uh, something for the emotional element, which is really beneficial here that uh, helps learning for the agency. When Elizabeth said, it looks to me like the killing the flower because I associate flower petals coming off with death. Well, uh, for an ad, that's not really good. Or if you're speaking about surgery and death, that's not what John Muir Health wanted to portray, obviously. That's not what the agency wanted to portray, obviously. But it's really uh, valuable to get that information here and find out before it was in market. And then when you go through everything, um, those were the individual comments. Everything is, is aggregated and you have a heat map. So this shows all the people in the focus groups in terms of their emotional elements and what areas they liked or didn't like. And you saw a lot of X's at the bottom uh, showing the copy wasn't really easy to read because the color. Uh, there's a lot on the robot, the robotic arm, uh, which is fine. Uh, and there's some X's at the bottom as well, as mentioned. Now, and the other thing here, on the quant side, 
branding was an issue, as you mentioned, with being soft, and the call kind of uh, reconfirms this, uh, is that you don't see a lot, you don't see basically any type of emotional element or any type of agreement uh, where, the, where the logo is, which means the logo and branding. Uh, on the top left-hand side, you see a question mark on John Muir Health, so you know something uh, is an issue there as well. And basically, uh, the same thing happened here when we uh, did the human audits uh, component uh, with full of positives and negatives. Here we see the doctor looking somewhat grumpy, but everything else overall is a very positive uh, component. And then we go through the, uh, the same exercise in having the aggregate with the heat map. And this agencies love this, and I love it too because it really, in one slide, it shows you what's working. Uh, well, and where are their areas of concern? And here, uh, the human audits description is working well, the robot is working well, the doctor needs to be less grumpy, the cutting edge needs a bit of work, and again, the branding is an issue as well. But again, uh, all that work, and we see everything on, on one slide, it's a great summary of what's working and what needs to be So, after all that, here is uh, the final in terms of what. Uh, changes were made. So as you can see here, the color palette has changed and softened. So it's a pastel green, it's warmer, and the actual doctor, or the person using, uh, the actor using uh, doctor is somewhat different. Uh, we brought in someone else, we shot it. He's smiling, he seems to be more approachable. Cutting edge has been changed to leading edge. A John Muir Health logo was brought down to the bottom right corner from the top left is more prominent. There's actually a call to action as well as information that people would like to find out more about uh, John Muir Health and their uh, robotic surgery, uh, an online uh, website as well as a telephone number if you'd like to get more information. So that's what went to market and it was tracked uh, and I'm happy to say that the ad did very well in the market. Uh, so again, here's an example of using both Quant and Qual and using the components of iTrax, both from the focus group moderator guide as well as the heat mapping and the emoticons, which really helped the agency and really helped me understand what was working and what needed to do. So from here, I'd like to switch gears uh, just to show you that uh, this works. Again, I work with iTrax uh, and they're a client of mine, I'm a client of theirs is that uh, it works across categories. And here's an example of uh, a television app. Bert, Bert, yeah. if we, uh, yeah. I do have a few questions uh, regarding the qualitative uh, side of things. So uh, perhaps we could uh, go through those now if, you, if that works for you. Of course. OK. Uh, what was the lag time between the survey and the follow-up qualitative sessions? Uh, it, it, less than a week. It's usually about four to five days. Uh, because we get a top line report on the on the quant, it's not include it's not conclusive or it's just since they we don't have all the information, but we have enough to be able to pull in terms of what's working, what's not working, and that's critical to try to get the the focus groups within uh, five business days afterward. Great, thank you. Uh, and uh, as the moderator, how do you process and respond to the markups by six to eight participants in real time? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Uh, as a moderator, how do you process and respond to markups by six to eight participants in real time? Ah, great question. Uh, you know, it's it's pretty easy because some, uh, you have about five minutes to, uh, to complete this and some people are doing it faster than other people. So I do it on whatever comes in first. So if a respondent A is, comes up with something and it's worth probing, I will do that. I, you can actually do that privately so it doesn't disrupt the other people. And then uh, once everything is brought together, it's actually it's relatively easy to do it uh, because it's almost, even though it's happening simultaneously, the information is coming sequentially. So it's not so it's not like uh, traditional focus groups if six people are speaking to you simultaneously, you don't know how to answer that. It is happening simultaneously but sequentially, so it's really easy to respond. Okay, and uh, and then uh, just an additional comment. Um, it may not be that every participant needs that additional probing, and all of the uh, information is recorded, and we can always review it uh, later on and have it get consolidated into reporting as well. 
Great. All right. Thanks a lot. Go go ahead, Bert. Okay. Uh, you're welcome. So I just want to switch gears uh, a mo for, for a few minutes in, uh, in terms of that was the case study, and we'll get back and wrapping that up in a moment. But it, it works across various categories, and here is another one, and this is called CSU Jeffrey Hazlett, and it's a TV program on Bloomberg TV. So here is the promo and screenshot. Uh, so same type of idea as what we've uh, been demonstrating on healthcare. Again, any category, this type of thing works. And, and here's an example of what's working and what's not uh, working well and areas that can improve and areas that are being efficiently communicated. And again, an aggregate comes up here uh, in terms of the heat mapping. Uh, and again, uh, and this is a screenshot from a TV promo. So from here, actually, I'd like to actually demonstrate how the actual heat mapping and the immortal cost works. So I'm just going to get out of here for a moment. And what you can see here is if you select all, you see everyone's comment. If you take it off, then you can see how people do it on an individual comment on an individual basis. So from an agency and research perspective, you can say, okay, well, Oliver said this and John said that individually. And then we can also see how they, they uh, did it together as well. So it's a really great tool to, to understand, for lack of a better word, the softer issues. So from here, using that same example um, from C-Suite, is that it can work in any type of media, including television and video. And here's an example of video. So it, it's the same type of format as you saw in the John Muir uh, Health Case Study, that uh, on the left-hand side, you have uh, the moderator, me, in the main room, and really discussing the various aspects of this ad. And then on the right-hand side, you have the emoticon, and you can Here's a static shot of people being able to stop at any time within the commercial or the video and add commentary, as you see here. And then at the end, what you have is uh, when this ad, for example, is 72 seconds long. On the bottom uh, reporting area, those bars represent where the most comments occurred. So at the beginning, there are a lot of comments, which are great. And within uh, the 10 second uh, area, there's some comments and then near the end, near the you know, 60 second mark and the 70 second mark, there aren't that many comments. So the question is, is the ad capturing everyone? It captured people at the beginning, but on a second by second area, uh, are, are people tailing off or are they losing interest? So we can really monitor that in terms of again, what's working, or what's not working, and why, and then get the actual comments. So from here, I'd like to... Uh, just actually showing the ad, run through it and see how a respondent would view it. And this will just uh, take a moment to load uh, because we are streaming through a, through a webinar and this usually, uh, there isn't a lag time when you're actually doing it online. Some have lost. 
but they all learned along the way. I'm going to find out their deep, deep secrets. So you can apply them to your own business. If you sit around waiting for the Calgary to come, they won't. It's time to settle up and ride. It's time to ride your own business. Okay, so there's the ad, and then uh, what you can see is the, the actual areas where people stop, and here's an example, uh, and, and what they comment about it, if they liked it or if they didn't like it, and specifically what it was. So it's great that you can toggle back and forth uh, to see those respondents, how they, how they responded, and you can, here I have selected all, and you can show it individually, or you can show uh, everyone, uh, which is a great thing to have. And as a respondent, I can stop the ad or the video at any time, pause it, and then bring up anything I like. I like this comment, and I just come to what I like it, or if I don't like it, I can do the same idea. So it's great uh, from a consumer point of view. It's very interactive, and the more involved they are, the uh, better insights we have. And agencies love it because they see it on a second-by-second -second area of saying, what's working, what's really resonating, uh, what's a rich area which you need in video or, or advertising, and then what areas that need to have a bit of a lift. Uh, so again, it's another wonderful tool to be able to have it, and you have the information in real time. So uh, from there, I'd just like to pull all this together and wrap it up and, then, and open it up uh, for more questions or comments. So really, uh, again, as an as a independent marketing communications consultant, I work with marketers, I work with agencies, I work with researchers, and uh, this quant qual and specifically the qual area with iTrax has been really beneficial because it helps understand and get uh, consumer reaction to ads. In pre-testing, I'm a huge proponent of pre-testing because you have a better understanding of what's going to happen before you get to final production and spend all that cash and get fast turnaround, and not just fast, it's cheaper, and you have richer insights using these various tools. In this study, uh, in this case study for John Muir Health, the component of having both quant and qual in one study is really beneficial because we didn't have to wait several weeks to have the quant, then do focus groups, and then a month later we get the results. That's not reality in terms of, as we all know, how advertising works in terms of having your realistic timelines and response times, so that's extremely beneficial. Uh, at the end of the day, in this specific thing, what National Research Corporation does for their clients, John Your Health as well as their other clients, it's a two-week turnaround from creative to report. And again, what I try to do is act as a conduit for advertisers and marketers and researchers uh, to be able to get the best information possible from any form of communication, be it a TV ad, be it a website, be it print, be it almost any type of, of communication and, and run it through this type of model. Bert, uh, there was a question. Can you clarify what you mean by pre-testing? Yes. Uh, pre-testing is uh, understanding what's going to happen or getting information before uh, the ad actually goes into market. So it's a laboratory environment, but we're trying to make it as less laboratory as possible. So uh, consumers, again, on the client side, 150 people see it. On the call side, maybe six to eight people see it. If you want to do two groups, 14 people see it. We get their input before the ad actually goes into market. And the earlier uh, we do it, the better, because that way you can make adjustments uh, accordingly and, and, and make revisions and then put it into market. At this point, I'd really like to open up to other questions or comments that people have, and uh, hopefully uh, uh, that would be great. Um, we're, you know, we're here, we have another 50 minutes to answer questions, and hopefully people have found uh, uh, at least one or two nuggets in this. Great. Thank you, Bert. Please feel free to enter your questions into the chat area at the bottom of the GoToWebinar panel. We do have some questions that people have sent in. Uh, so the, uh, um, the next question here is, uh, there's a question wondering whether the participants see each other's emoticons during an eye market exercise, uh, and um, the and then there's a second part to that. Or do the participant views 
uh, just include their own uh, markup of the iMarket image and um, whether, uh, yeah, so that's basically the question. Uh, the, uh, the, the people don't see, they only see their own uh, and the whole idea is that way one doesn't influence the other. Right. And, which, which is critical because the whole kind of, so it's a, it's a focus group, so it's a, it's a group by definition, but the emoticon, it's, not, it's, like it's basically it's a one-on-one, -on -one, which is another level of de uh, depth of information uh, received uh, using this system. Um, and just as a point of clarification, it can be set either way within the technology. So um, uh, uh, the question can be set as influenced or uninfluenced. Uh, so if you did want to have a collaborative iMarket session where people could see each other's uh, emoticons, uh, you, that could definitely be uh, set up from a technology perspective. Uh, however, the most common practice would be to have them uh, complete those exercises in an uninfluenced uh, manner, as Bert has described. And then one of the things, and you can actually do both. So you see it in the people don't see other people's, and then at the end you can share it, and you can have a group discussion of saying, from an aggregate, as you saw the heat maps, from an aggregate point of view, this is what the group thought collectively. What do you guys think of this? And uh, that could be valuable conversation as well. Mm -hmm. And actually, on the topic of influenced or uninfluenced, uh, for every uh, question that's asked in the uh, focus group, the moderator questions when they post the question, that is an option. There's a checkbox, and they can indicate whether they would like it to be influenced or uninfluenced. So even open-ended questions can be set so that um, the participant would have to post their response before they're able to see the responses of others. Uh, so it's an optional setting that you can toggle on and off. All right, uh, so going on to the next question here. Uh, uh, this is regarding video iMarket exercises. Bert, do you suggest participants view the entire ad first and then go back and replay and add comments? Uh, you know, it, 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 that, that's a great question. Uh, the way I, you, you can, the short answer is you can do it either way. Uh, so, you know, one, one model is everyone take, goes through it and then goes back and then uh, does the emoticon. My personal preference is to do it immediately. So that way, you're on, people don't even have time to kind of overanalyze it. They can stop it and say, yeah, I like this or I don't like that. Uh, so I, I really leave it open to uh, the, to the uh, consumer saying, or the respondent said, feel comfortable to do it any way that suits you. If you want to stop it uh, after 10 seconds and, and add a comment, by all means, go ahead. If you feel more comfortable of running through it once and then going back and providing comments, that's fine as well. So I really leave it up to the respondent in terms of their comfort level, but in an ideal world, I would like that have that immediate reaction. Like after 10 seconds, if they love something or hate something, I want to know that immediately. All right, thank you. Uh, going to the next question. Bert, has there been a follow-up on business results for John Muir? How can we make sure these changes in the advertising results in stronger business results? Uh, great question, a couple ways. Uh, one is they can go back and test it again if, if time and budget allows. Uh, but the other component is saying, you know, we have a lot of learning and we're quite confident because it's both quant and qual, so we can project this learning to the larger population. So what happens then? So what John Muir did in this instance and other clients do as well, is after the pretest, they don't test it again unless it's unless you have to basically change everything and start all over, which really the case. Uh, then you would track it in market and then on a monthly basis and then see how it performs and that's how you, that's how you understand for taking it from the laboratory environment which is this into the real, real world and see what happens and if you have strong results in quant and qual in this system uh, usually you have strong results on tracking as well. Great, thank you. All right, well, I believe we've uh, answered all of the questions submitted. I uh, uh, thank you. Um, we, if you do have any questions, I'll just make a few final comments and we can come back to them if there are any additional questions. 
um, I uh, would like to uh, express an extreme um, gratitude to Bert for the great webinar presentation. It was very informative and just showed um, a really exciting, innovative way to do advertisement testing. And uh, yes, definitely some great, uh, valuable insights uh, for John Moore Health. And we really appreciate uh, you sharing uh, your methods and techniques and, and how you approach the problem and the great uh, results that you were able to achieve. Um, all right, so we are um, at the end of our webinar. I'd like to thank everyone for joining us today. Uh, there were a number of questions regarding whether the web webinar was being recorded. Uh, we will email out a link to the webinar. And uh, if you are interested in additional webinars hosted by iTrax, uh, you can sign up for webinars at www.itrax.com slash webinars. Great, thank you all for joining us and hope to uh, connect with you again soon. Thanks, bye.